25th of July 2023. This is one of that what a fuck moments. And I think this one is going to raise a few eyebrows. And I'm not going to throw you with pictures and images and clips and things like that. I'm just going to talk a bit. The Americans are finding themselves in a very precarious situation. Very similar to the situation that the South Africans, the white South Africans, found themselves in 1994. At that stage, the Afrikaners were roughly about 3.5 million and the rest was about 60 million. Now, in any guy's brain that understands odds, that is huge odds. And there was no way that we, the white South African Afrikaners, could realistically expect our lives to continue as it was up to 1994. We were in charge of the economy, we were in charge of the government, we were in charge of everything, and everything was structured to be functional and optimized to deliver service. And we had a, we had a very strong army, a strong military. That is things that you can go and read up and you can check that. Now, in 2023, the Americans find themselves in exactly the same position in the world that white Afrikaners found themselves in South Africa. The odds for the Americans are also very similar. They are around about 300 million, 350 million, whatever. 300, let's call it 300 million. And the rest of the world that is against them is about 600 billion. So, the odds is very much the same. Now, the Americans could come and listen to Afrikaners and learn a lot of lessons. At this point in time, the Americans are faced with the biggest threat in their history. And that threat can have one of two outcomes. They can continue to live as good neighbors or they will perish because they cannot win. If you sit and listen to me now and you think the Americans can win against the rest of the world, you are making a massive mistake. Let's keep nuclear off the table because nuclear is a no-win situation for everybody. Let's just be realistic. So the Americans are faced today that there is a global resistance against their hegemony. Exactly as happened to the white Afrikaners in South Africa, there was a total resistance against the grip the white Afrikaners had on the country. And 30 years later, you can see what the results is. The hatred and the racism has just picked up speed to unbelievable levels. And in the middle class, the white Afrikaners has basically retreated from the economy. The economy that they are currently driving is an economy that benefits themselves. And that's all. They don't create jobs anymore. They do not share skills, none of that. They're keeping it in their community, so they have basically chosen the isolationist outcome. And you cannot blame them for that, because the onslaught from this racist government is tremendous. And there is a lot of violence also against whites. Yeah, there's a lot of violence in the black communities, but they are in charge of the country. Why don't they sort that shit out? The fact of the matter is, the Americans are in the same position. They are in a corner. And they must not make the same mistake that the Afrikaners made by choosing to isolate. Because if they do that, they will perish. It is a time now for them 
to get the cool heads in America around the table and say to themselves, okay, this is a serious issue, but what we have is enough to protect our country. We can make sure nobody attacks us. That is a massive advantage. They can pre protect themselves against an attack. And the way I read the signs, nobody in the rest of the world wants to attack America. All they want is for America to get out of their countries get out of their lives, leave them alone, allow them to develop in peace, allow them to be complete people. That's all the world wants. But the fucking newcons sitting there in the shit house in Washington do not understand that. They cannot fucking survive one day without fucking around in other people's countries. Why do they have 800 military bases across the globe? Why the hell do they have a military base in Syria? Syria cannot attack America. Syria don't want to attack America. Pack your soldiers up and fuck off home. Leave the Syrians alone. Leave them alone. Go and look at your own country. Your country is falling apart. Your infrastructure is basically fucked. Your infrastructure is going exactly the same way that South Africa's infrastructure went. Exactly the same way. But you are blind. You are too busy fucking around in the other countries to realize that your own country is in deep shit. Your people are living in tents, on sidewalks and in parks. Your people. Your veterans are sleeping on the street, your veterans. But you've got billions of dollars to put into the Ukraine. Why the fuck are you doing it? But the bigger question, you Americans, American citizens, why the hell do you allow your government to do what they are doing? I know what is the biggest problem. You have got no fucking clue what's going on in the rest of the world. Most of you cannot point Ukraine on a world map. Most of you don't know where South Africa is on a world, world map. You think moving out of Texas is going overseas. You must wake up. You are going the same route as the white Afrikaners went in South Africa. You are going the same route in the world. And you better make a plan. Stop what you are doing. I know it's going to take a lot of guts, but stand up and say, listen, we're done with this shit. America is important for us. We are pulling all our troops and equipment back to America starting tomorrow. Don't call us for any support in shit with your neighbors. Don't do it. Sort your own shit out with your own neighbors. But we're bringing our people back home. We're going to restart our economy. All these industries that we fucked up for this green shit, that is out of the door. We're going to build America back up to be competitive. This nonsense of teaching our children in school that men can have babies, that cock stops today. That stops today. There is no such thing as that. A man cannot have a baby. That's not how it works. Things like that. Basics that you need to sort out. But I've got news for you. If you do not do that, if you do not Get yourselves out of other people's countries and focus on your own country. You are not going to survive. Come to South Africa. Look what happened. Here in South Africa, now after 30 years, there are people that are beginning to understand. Listen, the only way 
for me to survive is I better be a good neighbor. Not a prescribing neighbor. Not a threatening neighbor. A good neighbor. And I can see here in my own country, and I see it from messages I get on the channel and so, there are black people that understand that this confrontational isolationist issue is damaging to the whole country. And I will do a skid mark on my relationship and the development of the relationship between me and my Mr. X. And I believe that what happened between me and him over the past, it's, all, it's not even a month yet, is a micro example of the reality that two guys from opposite sides of the political spectrum can actually reach a point where we're sharing pictures of our families having a bride, families having a Christmas dinner and things like that. And we can laugh at our own stupidity and we can cry about the shit that we are in without me demanding him to think like me and he demanding me to think like him. Without him accepting everything I say, without me accepting everything he say. But both of us made a decision on day one that whatever happens in our relationship, we must never allow respect to evaporate. We must always, first and foremost, focus on the respect and keep respect alive. The fact is, the Americans need to understand. They have to bring respect into the conversation they're having, they're having with the world. They need to respect other countries. They need to respect other cultures. Yes, you have got a very liberal environment where gender-confused people can have marches in your streets with banners saying nasty things about the Bible, saying ugly things about Christ and things like that. Your community accept it and allow it. But that guy cannot fly in Iran. That guy cannot fly in Moscow. That guy cannot fly in Sudan. Bring your soldiers and your bases back and protect Protect your own borders and make sure the world understand if you attack us, we will shoot back. That is the only message you need to give to the world. If you attack us, we will shoot back. Stop this shit of going all over the globe and attacking other people, bullying nations intimidating them with your military bases. Stop that. Pull back. Protect America. Your southern border. You are being invaded. And you don't even see it. The XXX has got plans for you Americans. You must understand if you are white. If you are white, you are in that category of people that the XXX wants gone. Don't forget that. So, on this morning, my message to the Americans is, bring your people back to your country. Spend your money on your country. Do that. Go and look at the technological and infrastructure development in China and compare it to America and then you will hang your head in shame. 
You need to wipe arrogance off the table. You are not the biggest and strongest country in the world anymore. You are not. But are you willing to die to prove that point? Think about that. Please give me a like and a subscribe and share the thing. And I thank you for the support and I want to thank the people that support the channel financially. It really helps. I think you can understand that it takes a lot of time for me to derive this channel. And I also need to bribe.